I was not given a lot of specific instruction as to what y'all would like to have to finish up the day. So a few of you were astute enough to watch on Facebook when I said I will give y'all a choice of topics. And since Kim didn't argue with me that I was going to do that, several of y'all said you'd rather talk about personal branding than be motivated. And so we're going to talk about personal branding a little bit, and I'm going to try and motivate you as we go. But you should be aware my brand of motivation involves stepping on toes. So if you do not have your steel toe shoes on, tuck them up under your chair because this might hit a little close to home for some of y'all, but I'm saying all this with a sense of love because as realtors, we have a tendency to put on a persona that may or may not be who we actually are. Would y'all agree? And maybe that's not y'all, I'm preaching to the choir, but there might be a realtor somewhere you know that says and does things that does not reflect exactly who they are. And so I don't have a clicker, so I'm just going to have to say Mario every time I change the slide. So can we give a big hand to Mario real quick because he's having to humor me. So Mario, take me up a slide. So with full disclosure, I don't know these agents. I don't know their names. And if y'all know their names, do not tell me because then I will have to change my slide. So if you ever want to have a good time, if you will Google bad realtor headshots, you will have page after page of images, y'all, and it is terrible. So the first thing I want to ask you is what image exactly do you want to project? when you are trying to attract future buyers and future sellers and you want to attract other agents referrals if you look at the first lady she obviously took a class at some point that says let your photo reflect your hobbies and your interests." now what I will say is that if she is in Napa Valley California that may be a wonderful headshot however if she's not in Napa Valley what do we think about our friend here she might be a lush and you know what? A lot of us in real estate do enjoy an adult beverage from time to time, but it should not be your headshot. Because if you're the buyer or seller, what do you think about this agent? She is more interested in having a good time than she is in looking after your best interest in dealing with this, their largest financial instrument. And y'all are going to hear me say that phrase a lot, their largest financial instrument because I think one of the things that we have lost as an industry is the understanding that when somebody calls us we're dealing with their largest financial instrument even if perhaps it's not the largest it's one of the largest and we get a little cavalier about that and her picture gives off a very cavalier idea of what real estate is and our second friend here has a hobby that spooks me really bad because I don't like clowns, I don't like dolls, and I don't know really exactly what kind of a niche market she's trying to work. I am sure there are buyers out there that will be attracted to the woman with her hand up a dummy's back, but I'm pretty sure that's a small market. When you're talking about something like this, it's so over-personalized, it's so over the top, you're not going to get people to identify with you. And that's what you want your headshot to do, the branding image of who you are. And then this last one, y'all, I'm pretty sure that person's in Florida. I, I, I'm 99% I'm sure that is not somebody from North Carolina. And I don't know if it's a man, woman, in between, both, one or the other, all of, I don't know. I'm not judging. But what I'm judging on this picture is this. Now, I know some of y'all have business cards with this posture. We're not learning a lot about body language in today's world, and I'm very concerned about our younger generation, which is losing the ability to have face-to-face -face contact and understand the impact of what this does. What does this body language say, y'all? You are closed. You are not open to their input, their ideas, to what's important to them. That's a very negative posture. It's a lot of other things too, but it's a very negative posture. And these are not just bad realtor headshots. I did do enough research to find out that these three individuals are using this in their marketing. And that's kind of horrifying to me because what they do, y'all, reflects on me. As a realtor industry, we've gotten to the point where when you say, oh, I'm a realtor, people do what? They either feel sorry for you because obviously you couldn't make it in any other field 
or they take a step away from you because you're fixing to say, hey, do you know somebody who'd like to buy or sell a home? And please stop saying that for the love of God. I'm so tired of that. And, uh, and I'm going to go down that road for one, just one quick second, because I'm also sick and tired of, and, and steal your, your loins here because I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. The greatest compliment you can pay me is the referral of your friends and family. Because y'all, for real, it's on all your business cards and your emails and your stationery. And those things are going to people who do not know you generally. The person who does not know you ain't going to send you their friends and family just because you handed them a business card or sent them a canned email. So stop it. So anyway, um, I'll get off that soapbox for just a second. I might get back on it because it aggravates my nerves. So what I'm going to ask you is in looking at these three individuals, what do you think a realtor should be? And this is a question you want to ask yourself because the realtor that you are is not the realtor that you are, is not the realtor that you are. The beauty of real estate is a place for all of us. There's a place for these three. They're all in business. Somebody's using them to buy and sell, and that's cool. However, you want to make sure that the image you portray is the kind of business you conduct. Mario, will you take us forward a slide? So the, what your photo says about you matters. And it doesn't just matter to the people who already know you and love you. It matters to the people who haven't met you yet. And it matters to me, a realtor in Charlotte, North Carolina, who's looking to place a referral in Panama City Beach. So if I look at these first two photos, I will tell you, in all fairness, I now know who the lady on the left is. She is a big-time, top-producing agent up in the Northeast. And I found it out because I was teaching a class, and three of her coworkers were like, we know who that is, and they told me who it is. But you know why I use her photo? If I am 30 years old and I see that photo, what's the one thing sticking out to me? That sad, tired telephone. Now, she is cranking it, y'all. The woman does a lot of business. She's one of the top agents in that franchise system. However, is her business in jeopardy down the road if she does not create a way to attract younger buyers? Because younger buyers are not going to mess with that. Mama might have used her. Grandma might have used her. But they're going to seek out an agent who understands their needs and how they communicate. And then because I am a REMAX agent, I feel obligated to poke fun at my own brand. That one at the top, y'all, he is way in her personal space. <laughs> Would you agree? That's a slightly negative posture. And what that tells me is, first of all, 1986 is gone. And I had that hair. And I have the receipts of buying white rain to prove it. But it's not around anymore. If y'all had the big crunchy ball, give me an Amen. See, I knew somebody in here was in my era in the 80s. And so this is what they're using to attract people. Your photo is meant to attract people because people want to work with people that they feel like they like and they trust and they have some commonality with. I'm not going anywhere near that dude because he's going to get too close to me. And so I'm also going to show you a couple of other photos. One is mine because I really like this photo which is why I can't change my hair, full disclosure. Women get trapped by their hair, and I can't change it because I'm pretty sure I can't have a photo made that good again. <laughs> and what makes that photo work for me? And the reason I'm telling you all this, I've made a lot of money from people who said, we picked you because we liked your photo. And you know what they liked about it? It's a real smile. It's not a glamour shot. It's poke your head out, turn it this way, lean in, put the boa on, smile. It's the real me. Now, she took a whole bunch of shots, and if you want to know where to get a really good headshot, I called a magazine photographer who takes action shots, not a headshot person who wants me to look like I'm at Olin Mills behind the fake bookshelf. So I called somebody who's a specialist in the type of photo that I wanted. And I also went outdoors because we know in doing research with consumers, when you are outdoors, you are perceived as being more approachable. Now, it's blurred out because I didn't want it to be a seasonal photo. Now, the other photo you see is my friend Raziel Unger. He is a realtor in Burlingame, California. If you don't follow Raziel, I totally recommend that you do. He is a master of community marketing and speaking to his neighborhood. Now, look at Raziel and tell me if you think he's old, young, or in the middle. You think he's in the middle, right? He's young. I'm in the middle, y'all. I mean, when I get my color fixed on Tuesday, you'll really think I'm young, but today I'm in the middle. 
Raziel is younger than his marketplace. So he specifically asked the photographer to take a headshot that would not reflect his youth. And those of us that got into the business when you were quite young, I was in my early 20s when I got into real estate, there's a gap there between your age and your consumers, correct? Whether it's real or perceived, you perceive a gap there. And Raziel didn't want executives to look at him as less than knowledgeable because of his age. So the photographer had an angle taken with his head up that would showcase the starting to recede hairline. Because his hair is not gray yet, he said, if it shows a little bit of hairline, it looks like I'm older than I am. Therefore, they'll believe I have more experience than I currently do. And also, in both of our photos, what are we looking at? We're looking somewhere else, over yonder, looking slightly to the left. And what we're looking at is not dead on the consumer. There's also research starting to show that when you look at a business card that's staring at you from the card, it feels very disingenuous. And you know why that is, y'all? We're losing the art of face-to-face, -face, what I call missionary-style real estate. Belly-to-belly, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes. And that's what we're really good at. But when you spook somebody out when you're in their personal space right out of the gate, you lose the ability to have a conversation with them. So in doing our research on how to do the best photos, when you're looking slightly away but still very visible and very identifiable, you're creating an opportunity for the consumer to reach you. Would you agree that those photos are more approachable than, say, the other two? So take a good hard look at your headshot that you're using. Does it reflect the age that you are? Because you're not going to be what you were 10 years ago. That ship has sailed. Does it reflect the weight that you are? Maybe you have added or subtracted 30 or 40 or 50 pounds. It doesn't matter. You're going to eat right exercise and die anyway. What I'm saying is, if your size is different than your card, you make it hard for a consumer to understand who you are. The size doesn't matter. The reality matters. The age matters. If your hair's changed, it all went gray or all fell out or you put a wig on and you wear it every day, let your picture reflect what they're going to see when they meet you. And y'all, we've all been through this, where you had an agent, you met them, you're like, that's so not who you are. I saw your picture on your business card and your website. That's so not realistic. We've all seen that. So don't do that to yourself. Realize that you have an opportunity right there at that one split second when they see your photo to engage with them so that they will trust you with that largest financial instrument. Hey, Mario. Oh, you're getting whispered at back there. So when I'm going to ask you this next, this also will be very painful for some of y'all. Who are you online? And this actually came up a little bit in our top producer panel at lunch about the way that you portray yourself on social media, on your websites, and how you are speaking to people. So one of my pet peeves with realtors is that they have a tendency to feel that their social networks, be it Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest, need to be real estate all the time. We are in the business of selling houses. And I just sold three today, and I'm listing one, and houses are flying off the shelves. And if you need to sell a house, call me. Who's seen that post? All right, stop it. Nobody wants to see that. And then when you list a house, y'all, your virtual tours, your open houses, don't belong on your Facebook page. You know what people do to those? They hide them. They don't unfriend you. They hide you because the consumer doesn't want to see that you're holding a house open on Saturday from 1 to 3. However, if you talk about that house in a way that is engaging to the consumer, so I'm holding a house open that has the coolest wine cellar I've ever seen. You can't steal the wine, but you can come see the wine cellar on Saturday. Would you agree that's a different way to say it than I'm having an open house on Saturday from 1 to 3? You want to make sure that if you're talking real estate, it's relevant to your audience and relevant to who you are. Y'all may not say things in the same way that I do, in which case your friends and family may be grateful because I am not for everybody, and I'm cool with that. If I haven't ticked somebody off, my day's wasted. 
But when I'm talking real estate on my Facebook page, y'all, I make sure that it's pretty funny and snarky because that's the way that I treat real estate. So this is one of my most popular real estate posts of all time. This was in the basement of a home that I listed. It's in the home of what I like to call a three-bagger. We've already discussed that. That's a divorce. They're going to sell one and buy two. We love them. There was a stripper pole in the basement, thus the divorce. So I took a picture. Well, you know, I know it's the hip new exercise, but I'll tell you all the funniest part that you can't see in this picture. The stripper pole was right here, and in the doorway going into this room was an exercise bike looking at the treadmills. So I don't know if she was working the pole and he was working the bike or how that was working, but anyway. So I took a picture of the stripper pole. Now, I did not judge, right? Because there's something for everybody. I asked the question. I said, it's a staging question. Should the stripper pole stay or go? And this generated tons of likes and comments. Why does it generate likes and comments? Because it's approachable and it's the real world and it's interesting. It's way more interesting than, well, this home has four bedrooms, two and a half baths, 2,200 square feet on a quarter of an acre with two-car garage, like every other house. Now, what made this interesting is I made mention of the fact that the stripper pole was located in the basement. Now, in North Carolina, we sell houses to a whole bunch of Yankees. And you know what Yankees really want in a house? A basement. And you know what we don't have very many of in North Carolina? Our basements. And so I had a basement, y'all. So this was a subtle way of telling buyers that I had a basement. And if I was on Instagram, I would be hashtagging basement on this, but I'm going to have to learn how to do that because I'm not an Insta person. So anyway, the cool thing about this post is I had clients, past clients, friends, family, random strangers making comments along the lines of, did they replace the carpet in that room? <laughs> yeah, let that sink in for just a second. But what happened is I got two buyers that we closed off of this photo. You know why I got those buyers? Because of the basement. And what we know about buyers and their activity on social networks is that they're not going to come right out in that comment thread and say, I want to buy it or I want to see it. They private messaged me and said, hey, where is this house with the basement located? Because I didn't give up the location. You know, Mama says, why buy the cow if you get the milk for free? It works in real estate, too. Hold a little something back. Because that was the information they couldn't get where? Zillow, Trulia, Remax, Realtor.com. They couldn't get it anywhere but from the listing agent. So this is a really powerful way to play your social media. And it doesn't work with every house, granted. It takes a house that has a hook to it. But I'm going to challenge you all, when you're dealing with somebody's largest financial instrument, there's a hook on that house. And the seller often knows what it is. What's the one special thing about your house? Don't tell me anything else, just one. And they want to list off ten things. You say, no, nah, baby, I said one. And then they'll tell you the one thing. This house, it was um, not their one thing, it was mine, but it worked. So I also will tell you there was a time I was showing property to an investor and in the street in front of the home, and I, I am not making this up. If I'm lying, I'm dying. There was a chalk outline of a body in the street in front of this house. And I posted a photo on Facebook of just the outline in the street because, again, I don't want to disclose the address. And I ungeotagged those, by the way, because I don't want to give away all my secrets. And I posted it. And the best part was one of my past clients wrote in and said, hey, is that near my old house that you sold? So you create these really interesting conversations when you are more than a virtual tour and more than an open house. On those lines, if your cover art on Facebook is your company or a yard sign or a house, go change it. Is anybody in this room a real estate agent 100% of your time every day, every hour, every minute? If you are, I will cry for you. I'm going to suggest that everybody in here is a little bit more than real estate. And that's why people love you already. Hey, Mario, will you advance me? So my Facebook page, if you're not friends with me, I'm Lee Thomas Brown on Facebook. There's another Lee Brown who plays Australian rugby, and I can't get on Google page one because of him. and He's big in the fantasy leagues. So you have to hunt me down by my maiden name. And my Facebook page generally reflects a little bit of real estate and more about my life and the things that are happening in my life. 
And that, y'all, is what keeps your clients and your friends and your family engaged with you. They don't care that you sold 80 gazillion houses. They don't care that you're a million dollar agent. And please stop saying that, by the way, because that was really big in 1978, and it is not 1978. And let them see a glimpse of your life, because when they're going to trust you with their largest financial instrument, they want to know that you're that person that's real and that you're genuine and that you care about what's important to them. So when you read my Facebook page, you'll see my cover art changes a lot. It's very seldom related to real estate, unless there's something really cool, like the Southern Plantation, Gone with the Wind looking house. If I list something like that, it may make the cover art. But generally, it's not related to any of that, because real estate, to me, is the tool that funds my life. It is not who I am. And if real estate is who you are, y'all, do some inner seeking because Jesus ought to be in place of real estate in your life. And I'm not going to go down that road today, but you can talk to me about it any time. So you'll also see that when I'm talking about things in my life, I'll write on my blog things like the 10 things I learned becoming a marathoner. I ran my first marathon and also my last in December. Um, it was a two for one. So I wrote a... When, have any of y'all ever run a marathon? So you spend an ungodly amount of time training for it. And you have all these hours of running which provide all this time for really cathartic thinking. And then you unload at the end because it's very emotional. And so I wrote my very emotional 10 things I learned. I put it on my real estate website. Why do I want it on my real estate website? I want my traffic on my real estate website. But that's not a real estate related post. But I had a ton of traffic on it because there are people who need to feel lifted up by what somebody else is doing. They, want, they don't want to be beaten down or sold to. They want to be lifted up. Your friends and family need to know that you love them and care them and want to bring them on your journey. And yes, this is a journey worth being on. So I shared that post on my Facebook page. That actually drove me three new listings from people who are not runners but who said they had been watching my journey and enjoyed traveling down this very, very painful path with me. And that had how much to do with real estate, y'all? None. And everything to do with the fact that I was very honest about what I was going through in the process and what I learned. And you open up yourself. And yes, you get hurt when you open yourself up. If you are a highly unattractive person, go on and be a highly unattractive person. Own whatever it is you are. Own your warts. Own your life because when you open yourself up to hurt, you open yourself up to love too. And that's bigger than all this. So when I tell you that about real estate, maybe one out of every 10 to 20 posts related to real estate. And for me, that's going to be related to the stripper pole, the dead body. My personal favorite uh, it's actually not the demon story that I posted this week because that was just too much to post about at one time. But my favorite post revolved around handcuffs in the master bedroom and the um, red velvet upholstered ceiling. If y'all want to see any of these photos, make my friend. They're in the photo albums because it's a bit much. And let people know that real estate can be fun because we're often not fun in general. We can be fun with certain clients. We forget that they want us to laugh with them when we see a house that's absolutely ridiculous. All right, Mario, take me forward one. All right, so Pinterest. Now, I think of Pinterest as the 4-H of the social media networks. I don't know if any of y'all were in the 4-H when you were young. Heart and hands and health and home, and I don't even know if it exists anymore. But Pinterest is run mainly by women. And men folk, y'all should get up in there because that is where the women are. And there is a ton of information going on in Pinterest. Did you know that this is the highest average income of any of the social networks? Pinterest is where the money is. And the women that hang out here tend to be in that 30 to 55 range. And oh, by the way, where are the bulk of our buyers and sellers? They're controlled by women in the 30 to 55 range. No offense, gentlemen, but you know the real score. You might want a house, but until she stamps off on it, you ain't getting it. So they're in here, and what are they pinning? House ideas, recipes, do-it-yourself ideas, tons and tons of visually driven things. And where I see realtors failing in Pinterest is you know what they're pinning? 
their listings. And what picture of their listings are they pinning? The front. And what's the least exciting picture of most houses? The front. So what I'm going to suggest is that you'll have more fun in Pinterest if you post the exciting one thing about the house. So that seller says the one thing they love was the pasta spigot. That's like something I really want in my dream house. Y'all know the spigot that goes out from your stove that you can fill up your pasta pot right there without dragging it across the kitchen. I really want that. I, whenever I list a house with it, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. You've got a pasta spigot. I take a picture and it goes on Pinterest. Because what do the 30 to 55 year old women who are hunting for houses look for? It's pasta spigots and fun house ideas and cool backsplashes and really good hardwood floors. And how about that porcelain tile that looks like hardwoods? They're looking for ideas for their dream house. And oh, by the way, wouldn't you rather talk to the realtor who understands what today's dream house looks like? And that doesn't engage anybody when it's the brick accent front vinyl sides in Charlotte we call it five four and a door five across the top two windows a door and two five four and a door that's not engaging y'all you want to engage people now one of my boards is called funny stuff in real estate and that's where I post some of these photos I've located if y'all can see on the screen the heads that was one of my favorite past clients his side hobby was taxidermy now, they lived in a good price point neighborhood. They didn't live in a single wide out in the woods. They were in a very high-end neighborhood. The neighbors would have died had they known that this guy's hobby was taxidermy. And his wife had said, no more heads, none, because there were 23 in that living room. So when I went to list the house, I opened the door and said, um, where are the bodies? Where are the bodies? Please tell me they're not in the backyard. But that was hilarious. And then you open the closet door and the grouse and the duck and the pheasant all fell out on me. So we had to stage it a little bit. That board generates a lot of traffic because what is the general public interested in about our jobs? They love that we get to see inside people's homes. So let them be voyeurs and drive them back to your website. So Pinterest is cool because those beautiful images link back somewhere. Link them to your website. Link them to that listing. If that house has the cool pasta spigot, link it back to their listing so that when that really think that mama who just had another baby and she's outgrown that first house and she's ready to upsize, she clicks on the pasta spigot. Oh, it takes her to leasesales.com. Well, I can search right here. You've got really nice organic traffic. And by the way, Pinterest is fun. I'll never do anything on there. My husband says that website was created to make women cook and clean and do crafts again. And he's, he's just hopeful. So if you'll advance me a slide, Mario. He's an engineer, so I get to poke fun at him. I'll talk about having an opinion. And I know that those of you that don't know me may not yet know that I do have lots of opinions. And this might be shocking and surprising to y'all because in real estate, we are told not to talk about what, y'all? Don't talk politics. Don't talk religion. Don't talk sex. What else did you say over here? Pride. What did you say? Prime. Oh, crime. I thought you were talking about prime. I'm like, we talk about interest rates all the time. I mean, outside of your federal fair housing stuff, but we're not supposed to talk about politics, sex, religion. You know, those are taboo topics. And what I'm going to suggest to y'all is there are a lot of people out there that crave knowing your opinions. They hire us for that. They call us and say, should I buy this house? Not because they want to know the dollars per square foot, but because they know that we understand that that is a builder of good, reputable quality or if the DOT is going to bring the bypass through that neighborhood, or did that school go into Title II and now there's a whole different set of teachers and kids moving in? What do we know? We have to have opinions and provide data and tell them, hey, here's where you can find your answers, and here's what I know, and here's where we can do more research. They count on us to be more than the brick front vinyl sides, four bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,200 square feet, two car garage. Because guess what? That bit they can get everywhere, right? What they can't get everywhere is your opinion. And what I'll tell you is that you don't have to be hateful giving out opinions. I will not understand for the life of me why in America we have decided that if somebody's different from you or disagrees with you that they are therefore evil and must be eradicated. 
I think that needs to change, y'all. I'm cool with the fact that not everybody in here is going to agree with me. In fact, you should come up to me and say, Lee, I disagree and here's why. I'm probably going to listen to you. And even if I disagree, I would love that you told me what you thought because I'm not going to hate you for it. I might disagree, but that's cool, y'all. I'm so tired, tired, tired of milk toast. And realtors have got to stop it. We have spent so much time trying to be everything to everybody. We're not doing a good job for anybody. So on Twitter, I tend to have more opinions than I do on Facebook. So if you really want to see the the side of me that has really big opinions, Twitter's where it is, at Lee Brown Remax. And by the way, Remax is fairly horrified that that's in my um, handle, but they don't fuss at me because I guess I bring traffic to the brand. And I'm going to tell y'all, um, I made up my little thing that said I'm the voice of reason in real estate, and what y'all can't see with the small prints is self-appointed, that I self-appointed myself as the voice of reason. And, and you can do that on Twitter. You can give yourself a handle. I do call myself the No BS Realtor, and you know where that came from, y'all? My clients named me that. As soon as they started calling me that, I said, well, I, I like that. I want to use that. And have I offended people by using the word bullshit out loud? Probably. Do I want to work with somebody that's offended by that word? No. Because they probably can't handle the fact that their 1986 Wedgwood Blue and Rose living room needs to be redecorated either. So when you're thinking about Twitter, again, you don't have to be hateful. And you can do this on any of the networks, but tell people what you think. And so if you go to the next slide, Mario, I want to tell you all what happened to me. And this is where I kind of realized that I really should always have an opinion. I advertise on WBT Radio, which in Charlotte is conservative talk radio. Now, I'm going to give you all a caveat here. I am registered as a Republican, but I'm in the middle. I'm what I call a Demopublican Republicrat which is probably most of y'all, I am fiscally conservative and socially, I say, let people be. I don't care who you're sleeping with, for heaven's sakes. And would y'all agree that's probably most of us? However, we are currently unrepresented because the fringe people on both ends have controlled way too much for too long. Well, I do run my ads on conservative talk radio because let's call it what it is. The money is not on NPR living in mama's basement. The money is the baby boomers on conservative talk radio listening to Rush. Now, he's insane, and I don't agree with most of what he says. However, he has very loyal listeners, and his loyal listeners tend to be uh, college-educated baby boomer males who are probably going to be looking to downsize sometime in the near future and who happen to have the big E in their homes, which is known as equity. That's our favorite sellers. So I advertise there. Well, Whenever my ads run next to Rush, they're very expensive spots because he does have all these uh, loyal listeners who are rabid. So when people hear me next to Rush, the conservatives, they call me and they use me because they, they use who advertises with Rush. And then there are what I call trolls. And if you're not familiar with trolls, these are people who live in their mama's basement and say nasty things on the Internet because they have nothing else to do with their lives. Well, every time my ads ran next to Rush, I would get attacked. And I mean nasty things. They would call me misogynistic. I'm like, well, for heaven's sakes, I am a woman. How can I be against women, you morons? They'd call me racist. They'd call me homophobic. I'm like, do you people, have you ever seen my friends, my neighbors? I am, I am thrilled that my life can't be contained to any category of anything at all, ever. But they would attack me, and it hurt my feelings. And I called my radio rep and I said, I think you should take my ads off of Rush because I've got people upset with me. And she said, those are not people. Those are little angry internet people. Ignore them. They're not real. <laughs> so I tried to ignore them, but I've, if you know anything about me, I don't ignore things very well at all. And finally, one afternoon, I lost my temper. And you're not supposed to lose your temper online. I lost my temper online and I said, I'll advertise wherever I damn well please. You trolls don't like it, don't listen. And I hashtag TCOT, which is a Tea Party, Zone conservat a Tea Party conservatives on Twitter. And again, I'm tagging the right group. I don't have to be part of them, but I'm tagging the, what Tea Party was originally meant to be and not the fringe lunatics that it is now, but it's a different discussion. And then I hashtag my own, because if you don't use Twitter, the fun thing about hashtags is they just denote a conversation. 
So you can start your own conversation. So I hashtag, I am the free market. So see, I'm self-appointed and I am the free market. And I sent it. Oh, and I felt better. I said, I have told those trolls off. And then I went into lunch with my preacher, y'all. And I, this was a Saturday afternoon. I came back out to my car because I don't take my phone in on appointments. Even if it's with friends, family, preachers, the phone stays in the car so I will not be distracted. I highly recommend that as a tactic to actually go eyeball to eyeball with people. And I came back out to the car, and I'm pretty sure there was smoke coming out of my windows because my phone was on fire. It was sitting in the cup holder, rattling. I mean, because I leave it on vibrate. And it was insane. I picked it up, and like a thousand new followers on Twitter, and I'd been retweeted hundreds of times. I'm like, what the hell just happened? <gasps> oh my God, the Twitter people are going to eat me alive. And it was what you call a flame war. So when you say something that's inflammatory, you've started a flame war. Well, what happened is I told the trolls to leave me alone. And so then all the other trolls said I was evil, but then all the conservatives over here started to protect me. And they were fighting, and I'm down here going, what did I do? And it was insane, and I was panicked for a minute. And then, you know what the cool part was? Those conservatives that were trying to protect me from the evil liberal trolls started retweeting all my virtual tours. Y'all, my showings went up. My views went up. I had people coming out of the woodwork. Your houses are all over Twitter. And I said, well, yes, they are. And I am grateful for that. But they had blown it up to protect me because they felt like they wanted to protect an advertiser who was being unfairly attacked. Now, I really wish I could replicate this all the time because I can't, but it's just an example of what happens when you appropriately lose your temper in the right place with the right audience, and that's okay. And some might say, well, Lee, do you lose any liberals as clients because you happen to be a gun-carrying woman? And I say, well, I lose some conservatives because I'm the gun-carrying woman who supports gay marriage, so nobody really knows where I fall. And so I'll lose some on either side, and do I mind, y'all? No. I don't want to work with somebody that's hateful and ideological about things that are ugly. I would rather work with wonderful people who say, Lee, I don't carry a gun. Are you really going to carry a gun on our showings? In which case I say, yes. Her name is Bessie May, y'all. So if you see me advertising I'm out with Bessie May, she goes with me on showings. You know why? We're in a dangerous profession. And I refuse to apologize for protecting myself. And... My clients think it's hilarious. Now, I did lose one particular client over this. They were um, in my office, because I do listing presentations in my office so that I can get them into a neutral, for me, location, and talk to them about market data before I go into their home where they get distracted by all of their personal belongings. And she saw my target on my door. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll see my target, because I like to go to the gun range to let off steam. And she said, I don't know that I can use a realtor who carries a gun. I said, well, that's fine. I'll still have to protect you when somebody comes after your ass one day. Because <laughs> I will. And so she left, and I said, thank God. I can't deal with anybody else who's going to be hateful to me. And as realtors, how many of y'all had a client that was hateful to you? I'm going to suggest that when you own who you are and people see a facial figure that's relatable and approachable. They're less likely to be hateful. And when they're hateful, it's easier to tell them to pound sand because you will find somebody else with whom to work. Now, I'm going to give you all a little um, after note on this Twitter thing that blew up because I got picked up by Michelle Malkin, and she's a contributor on Fox News, and their little feed is twitchy, and that's where all the explosion came from. And it tagged me next to Rush, but he never responded to my tweets or emails, and I was hurt. But what happened is I sold approximately 16 houses from that one tweet. What happened is I had people contacting me saying, when my listing's up, I want a realtor like you who's going to go to bat for me like you stood up for yourself. Y'all, that was a really powerful turning moment for me, and that was a few years ago, and obviously I've lost my filter completely in that time frame, and I would suggest that y'all need to lose your filter too. And maybe you're not going to be as outspoken as I am. Maybe you are a very boring, 
quiet, shy, doesn't speak out person. That's cool. Be that person too. There are consumers that won't use me because they're afraid I'm going to say what's true. But they want somebody who's going to quietly nurture them. I don't quietly nurture. But if they don't know that you exist and that you are that quiet, nurturing personality, who are they going to call? Every other realtor who's out there with a business card going, the greatest compliment you can pay me is the referral of your friends and family. Maybe if you look like who you are, they will come to you. Take me to the next slide there, Mario. So on YouTube, are any of y'all on YouTube? I highly suggest that you get yourself comfortable with YouTube because you know who owns YouTube? Google. And which search engine do we kind of have to be friends with? Google. So on YouTube, you have the opportunity to build a channel. Now, some of you are ready to throw up right now because you're not comfortable with video, right? Now, I'll tell you something. I know this is a secret and the doors are closed, so it's okay to say this. I mentioned before, some people are not as attractive as others. And some of y'all don't do video because you don't like the way you look, or you'd like to lose 10 pounds first, or you'd like to get your hair fixed, or you think your voice sounds too country, and I'm going to tell y'all, country bumpkin is all right. Yankees like it. So you have all these objections for why you don't do video. Now, the end consumer is going to meet you at some point. So if you're ugly on video, you're probably ugly in real life, and you just will pull that Band-Aid off right now and let them see what you are. Y'all, they're going to love you anyway. The coolest thing about video is it allows you to bring the buyer and seller into relationship with you before they've ever even met you. So on YouTube, we try to put up videos that reflect our properties. I've got a new style that we're using now that's more storytelling and less virtual tourish. Obviously, Inman likes to run my videos because I share my commentaries and opinions with the world. But it's a very relatable thing. And some of y'all have seen me on Inman, and you came over and talked to me and said, I've seen your videos, and you feel like you know me because you saw me on Inman, right? So the consumers do that too. What we're doing with video that's really powerful, and I've been teaching this for a couple of years, and some other coaches have taught their version of it, but they screwed it up. I'm going to tell y'all the right way to do this. So we're using video to respond to buyer and seller leads. And it's changed our conversion rate dramatically. So when you take that little iPhone or Samsung or whatever your smartphone of choice is, hold it up because the chins go back. So you want to hold it right here. Down here is bad. Up. And then you're going to say into your camera, 10 seconds or less, hey, I'm Lee Brown. You inquired about selling your house in Porter's Landing. I'd love to get you some more information. I'll call you tomorrow. Send. We text it and we email it to them. And y'all, the response is huge because all of my competitors, because they were on several websites, all sent back an email that said, I'd love to help you buy or sell a home. Can I set you up a VIP search? Can I provide you a free CMA? Which realtor do they respond to? The one that wants to connect with them on a different level because we're dealing with their largest financial instrument. Video can allow you a way to break through that clutter and be yourself. And I'll tell you when this really hit home for me. I was at the ball field with my daughter. Now, she's 10 now. She was 7 at the time. I have an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old. And so I was coaching my daughter's softball team. If you want to have really good effect in marketing to little league teams, suck it up and be a coach. Because first of all, it will force you to be out there and not sacrifice your family to show a house. And when the families know who it is working with their children, they're much more likely to connect you with the name on the back of the shirt. So I coach because it forces me not to work during my kids' games. And it's 10.30. Our game's at 10.30, okay? I've got 12, 7- and 8-year-old girls around me. So what's the noise level? Really high and really high-pitched. They're squealing. There's dust. It's everywhere. And my phone dings, and it's the neighborhood I've been farming. It's the first good lead in the neighborhood I've been farming. And when does that first good lead on the neighborhood you've been farming come in? At the wrong time. And what does a realtor want to do right then? I want to call them because I want that one, and I can't, right? I'm surrounded by squeals. So I got my phone, made my video, and I said, hey, I got your inquiry about selling your house in Porter's Landing. I'm at the ball field. I'll call you on Monday. Send it. This is Saturday, okay? Because I don't work Sundays. I go to church and I take care of my family. I ain't working on Sundays. 
And y'all shouldn't either, by the way. Even if you don't worship God, which you should, but even if you don't, you should have some time set aside in your life that is sacred and does not belong to your clients. So anyway, Saturday went, Sunday went, Monday came, Monday went. Monday night, 9.30, I sat up in the bed and said, Oh, oh shit, I didn't call them. Have y'all had that Monday before? And, and you can't do anything about it because it's 9.30 at night and I probably could call them, but I can't because then they'll know I'm awake and I, I wanted that lead and it's that neighborhood and I've wasted all this money farming and, you know, wailing, moaning, gnashing of teeth. So Tuesday came and we're in the office, you know, putting out our first of the day fires and the phone rings and it was that lead. And you know what they said? Hey, when can you come list our house? We didn't want to bother you yesterday because we knew you'd be busy after spending the weekend with your family. I mean, for real, y'all. That was the same way. So I went to the house and I listed it and I said, I'd like to know why y'all picked me. Do y'all ever ask that question? If you don't, it's a very, very powerful question to ask. You won't lose the business over asking. I've met a lot of realtors who are like, well, if I ask, they might rethink it. No, they won't rethink it. Why'd you pick me? And they said, we picked you because you responded to us immediately. But you did not sacrifice your children for us. Y'all, that was a big aha moment for me. Because as realtors, we have sacrificed everything on the altar of commission. Everything. Our honor, our integrity, our morals, our families, our marriages, our churches, our nonprofits, our personal health, our fitness, our diet. We've sacrificed it all. And not all at the same time. Sometimes it ebbs and flows depending on what's happening in the market. And if anybody in this room has not sacrificed anything, you're lying or you just got your license yesterday. So it was just a moment that helped me catalyze why I do business the way I do business and why it was okay to be me, not dressed appropriately, surrounded by squealing children and dust, and able to tell them that, yes, I can help you, but it ain't going to be today. And they gave me grace. It was the coolest thing ever. They gave me grace because I was honest with them. Video does that in a way an email could not have done, y'all. And it wouldn't have happened on the telephone either. You know why a telephone wouldn't have worked? They'd have answered. And you can't say, hey, I'm just calling you so I can call you later, because that doesn't work, does it? Once they've got you, they want to know what the house is worth. So just tell me what it's worth right quick. Well, I didn't want to have that. So use video as your partner. On buyer leads, it's huge. I'll give you my script on buyers, and this really works because we are competing with websites that have bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage, and we that's genies out of the bottle. When I respond to buyers, I say, amen, camera's up. Thank you for inquiring about 123 Elm Street. I'd love to answer any questions you have about schools and taxes. We'll be following up with you. Look forward to talking to you. Send. Because the two pieces of information they really want and can't find online Schools and taxes, y'all. All the different websites have made that information very hard to navigate. So I want to offer to be that resource, which, by the way, reminds them that as their realtor, I am their expert on the process and the community and how they can get through everything. And it doesn't matter about dollars per square foot. Fast forward me, Mario. I'm running out of time. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going long. So I just wanted to point out you have to get over yourself. And... YouTube is not friendly to me. These are the thumbnail grabs of the videos I send. And I look like I've got some kind of Bell's palsy. And I, I've had to get accustomed to that. It was hard at first, but now it's just kind of ridiculous. And I go ahead and I send them. And you know what I found out? In talking to consumers, after we get to be buddies with them in the buying and selling process, they laugh at these. But it made me click on it because I knew it was real. It didn't look staged. When you send something that's you sitting at a desk, they know that's fake. They know you're sending it to everyone. Now, I do have stock ones that we send after hours and on weekends that say, hey, I'm in an appointment, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. But it's still a bad thumbnail, and sometimes they're in the car. But the car's parked, by the way, when I take those. Or it's outdoors or in my living room. This is a very real and relatable way to be yourself. And also, when they hear your voice and they hear your inflection and how you react to them, they now know what kind of person you are, and it makes it easier for them to marry you. Mario? 
So I'm just going to ask you if you're consistent in what you're doing. So you saw across my platforms, and if you follow me online, my Facebook looks like my Twitter, looks like my Pinterest, looks like all my stuff. It's consistent so that when the consumer finds me anywhere, they're not confused that the no BS realtor over here is all perfectly perfect over here. It's the same message going across the line so that they know they're going to get a consistent experience from us because in real estate, we have failed as an industry to deliver a consistent experience. And maybe you do, but your colleagues don't. So we have a process there that we could each make better, which makes the industry better. If you don't have a brand, these are some websites where you can have a logo done. Fiverr is really cheap. That's where you'll find people doing anything for $5. And really, that's the best way to spend time when you've had a glass of wine with your friends. And then logotournament.com is where I had my logo designed. Logo tournament's really cool. You put up a prize bucket, and then graphic designers will say, based on what you've said about yourself and who you are and how you conduct life, here are some logo ideas. And then 99designs.com is in the same vein. So if you need those websites, I'm going to have to go past that slide. I will make sure that you can get that. Actually, I can post it. Somebody can post it on the um, Facebook group. So Mario, pass me one more. That's the end. I ran y'all a few minutes over. I would ask you, please, take a look at yourself. Own who you are, because what you are is an amazing creation of God. And you need to own whatever that amazing creation is. Embrace it, make it bigger, and let people know why you and not the other 5,000 agents in Jacksonville and not the other million agents in the country, because you're in this room for a reason. You serve clients in real estate for a reason. And now it's up to you to go let people know what your reason is. So take the one thing you've learned today, and I know all of you got more than one thing, but remember, that was your rule, one special thing today. Take it forward from this place and make real estate better. Thank you so much for having me today.